Anvil Empires, a 24-7 persistent war game set in medieval times, was just recently announced on Steam, and in that announcement, they said that the game will be in an invite-only pre-alpha testing phase for the next stage of development. Well, that stage of development is here, and I'm lucky enough to have been included in the testing, where we had up to 400 players on at one time in two focused playtests. If you're not familiar with what Anvil Empires is, I have a complete overview of the game in my release video, which I've linked in the top right of your screen here and down in the description below. But essentially, the devs want to create a playable world where thousands of players group up between three separate factions, Pagans, Ancients, and Remnants. These factions then create settlements to lay claim on land throughout the map, build massive forts, and eventually progress through the age to create various medieval weaponry to wage war. Although we don't know everything in Anvil, last week the devs allowed access to a public group of playtesters where we were allowed to finally jump in game and play ourselves. Now, I want to be very clear that everything you see here is in pre-alpha. This isn't a beta. This isn't an early access game. This isn't even an alpha game. This is pre-alpha development. And as such, there will be things that are broken or bugged, and mechanics can be changed or completely removed by the next test. So when I was playing this and in making this video, I haven't been focusing too much on things that don't work. I don't want to showcase the weird bugs. Instead, I'm trying to get a good understanding of the direction the dev team is trying to go with this game. So as you watch this, please keep that in mind as well. Now, when I downloaded the game and booted it up, I was able to see a development diagram that was released. And here we can see how intricate the gameplay systems are going to be when it's eventually finished. On the left, we have whatever the actual system is, like large scale things such as the game's economy or even more focused smaller scale things like mining or smithing. As you move from left to right, these systems become more developed, with unimplemented or stand-in features in the first section, experimental items in the middle, and pre-alpha or working features on the right. Even before I logged on and spawned in this world, this development diagram here got me pretty excited for what we should expect, and I was surprised to see that even in these basic stages of development, where they just simply say they are stand-in features, while they were surprisingly fun, and when we actually played with them in-game, I wouldn't have thought that they were just simply stand-ins. Now, when I started the playtest, the devs looked to have only unlocked two of the three factions, possibly to just help focus the playtesters, and these factions are the Remnants and the Ancients. Remnants appear to be more like like the Holy Roman Empire type style, whereas the ancients kind of seem designed over past old Germanic tribes. But since at the moment it doesn't appear like there's any difference between the factions apart from their obvious visual differences, I just simply clicked one, the ancients, and spawned into the world. First off, the graphics are actually really impressive for a pre-alpha game. It looks like a mix between Valheim and RuneScape. The player models are all kind of basic, but because of the terrain and the forest and the lighting and even the water, it all just kind of feels real. As you walk around, there's a variety of trees and bushes and foliage instead of just simple copy-paste assets. And as we would learn later on, depending on the actual species of tree that you fell, you would get different amounts of wooden planks. So it's details like these that make me believe that all aspects of this game are going to be incredibly immersive. So whether you want to be a lumberjack, a farmer, or even a soldier, you'll be rewarded with good gameplay. I wandered around for a bit, forged for some berries, threw up a fire pit, made myself some food, and then proceeded to sink to the bottom of the river. And at first I thought that this was a bug and I should be able to swim, but then I remembered. Wait, weren't people not able to swim back in medieval times, and if you did happen to float and stay alive, you were considered a witch? So yeah, no, this was actually completely spot on for the time period. Now in Anvil, at the top left of your screen, you have hunger, health, and stamina. And both your health and stamina are based on your overall hunger. And this just really drives home the fact that you are not only fighting against the other faction, but fighting against the wilderness. And you need to stay alive through cooking and taking care of yourself if you want to be successful. As you get hungrier, the rest of your stats actually go down, only replenishing once you eat. And additionally, in order to prevent spam eating during battles, something you might see in games like RuneScape, you actually get a specific food debuff for a set amount of time, meaning that you'll need to have a variety of foods to choose from in order to stay at max health. It's a really interesting mechanic, and it appears that this cooking process actually gets incredibly in-depth, even at this early pre-alpha stage. These are the current known recipes, and these recipes are not just ingredient dependent, but some things can't be made without more advanced structures like ovens or hearths. 
I wouldn't actually be surprised if in the future entire groups or settlements become dedicated food hubs where you hunt, farm, gather, and fish in order to fuel the war machine as you go on future raids. Now, after a bit of solo adventuring and dodging some wolves, which will attack you if you're not paying attention, I joined what looked like an organized group to help establish one of the ancients' first large settlements, Axe Bridge. The initial start was incredibly chaotic, and once a workbench and gathering pit was built from forging twigs, we could then begin building actual structures, and this is how towns begin to tech up and advance in Anvil. Soon we were felling large trees from axes that were made at a tool area and then depositing those logs into a lumber mill which would then create wooden planks. But if you were wondering, you couldn't actually just walk up to the settlement and start taking the wooden planks they were making. The settlement system actually requires that if you want full access to every building, you need to pledge loyalty to the place, and in order to do so, you need to build a hut. This hut is a basic form of player housing, and not only can you store a few items there, it also acts as your spawn point when you die. So, since I wanted to help the settlement, I gathered some twigs, built my hut, and it was immediately destroyed since the local HOA representative decided I built in a restricted zone. Once I had been relocated to the proper area, my hut was built, and I became a fully fledged axe bridge cottager and was on my way to help gather more logs. As the settlement progressed, I began collecting wood planks for a boat, and once I had enough, I grabbed a couple buddies and we went sailing to the southwestern island of the Bjorma to try to break new ground for ourselves. Once we landed, we cooked up some food and searched for resources, with the most important one being stone since we couldn't upgrade our village at all without it. Although we did eventually find that stone node, what I didn't expect to see were actual animal dens. Previously, I thought these wolves just roamed around areas and would just randomly spawn in, but apparently wolves and bears actually have dens which need to be destroyed to prevent them from respawning. If we wanted our settlement to be successful, we had to steer clear from both of these dens until we had better weapons to deal with them in the future. Deciding on our spot next to the coast so players could join us by boat, we placed our gathering pit, made a workbench and a few huts, and got to work. The early settlement game is actually pretty tough if you don't have 40 or so people like we did back in Axe Bridge. And not only do we have to cut down trees and process them into wood planks for building, but we needed to have a dedicated cook to keep the town fed. The hungrier we got, the less stamina we had, and that would directly affect the amount of trees we could fell, since every swing of the axe would cost stamina. Additionally, as we cleared out areas of tree line, we began to collect seeds from some of these trees and we had to then designate an area to reforest, so that way we could make sure we'd have nearby lumber growing in the future. It was a lot of work, but it was extremely rewarding since we could physically see the town grow and expand. As we built more structures and we were eventually able to upgrade our little pit, we saw a legit town hall, which was definitely worth it. We also even created a little garden and planted cabbages so that way we could facilitate our hunting and gathering with our own crops. Farming was still in a very basic state, and you needed to create tilled land with a hoe, plant your seeds, and then water them from a well in order to keep your crops alive. Still, even in this basic state, it was a nice implementation of farming, and if you did want to take it a step further, you could even create fertilizer from animal droppings and the ash from fireplaces. Once again, another example of the devs paying attention to smaller details and creating connected gameplay loops between the various settlement processes. Over the next day, we would expand our settlement through the use of banners which would extend your buildable range, and we began to wall off the area since wolves had begun to attack the villagers. This expansion unfortunately brought us in range of the bear and wolf dens, which meant the only way to safety was to destroy them. If we didn't, we wouldn't be able to create and mine stone. Apparently in Anvil, bears are essentially mini-bosses, and these things would one-shot kill you if you had no armor. And even if you did have leather armor, it was still a two-shot. At first, we had spears and axes, but they did so little damage, we burned through our entire stockpile of food just trying to kill them, and when we finally did, we still needed to destroy the den itself, which required around 30 torches. However, once we did destroy it, we were able to get some leather hide, which we could then use to create better leather armor. As the test progressed into the second and final day, we began nearing the end of how much we could realistically build in our settlement. Stone was being processed into stone blocks, we had handcarts to help with delivery of raw materials, and we even were able to build an upgraded weaponsmith which allowed us to create swords and shields. Once equipped, we were actually able to use the shield wall mechanic which increased the individual player's defense, and when two other players joined, we had a far superior defensive line which we could then easily handle bears and wolves with. Even just by yourself having a sword and shield, you could just solo wolves now, which is a huge benefit to solo adventuring. I thought this was really well implemented, and overall I think the combat felt pretty good, although I do think it lacked weight behind the swings. 
As I was using my sword, it was actually kind of hard to register when I was hitting something and when I was missing it. And I wasn't even too sure what was being blocked by my shield either. But for a pre-alpha, I have to say it was pretty well done. Overall, I think our tiny settlement was a very good intro to the game, and I was pleasantly surprised to see how advanced all of these gameplay systems were. When I went to check out the Discord afterwards, I also had a chance to see some of the more advanced forts and sieges some players were able to accomplish. Most of these were actually done from groups of past closed playtesters who were so familiar with the game when they grouped up, they were essentially able to rush build the meta stuff and went around trying to kill things, and the stuff that they made were really, really impressive. If you want to see the full clips of the smaller clips I have here, I've linked them down in the description below. But even at this incredibly early stage of the pre-alpha, the combat is surprisingly fun and engaging, and it just looks really awesome. When you add the inclusion of cross-faction voice chat, it also makes for some hilarious moments. Anvil Empires has released a playtest roadmap for the next couple months, with the next test coming May 2nd and will be focusing on settlements followed by PvP combat. Overall, I think this is a fantastic base for the game, and personally, I'm just floored at how well it was already done. For a pre-alpha game, I really didn't see any standout bugs, and for the most part, I would have never guessed that a lot of these things were just simply stand-ins. At this pace, I wouldn't be surprised to see an actual playable beta stage of the game within the next year or so. And what do you guys think? Is Anvil shaping up to be a game you're interested in playing? Do you like the farming or maybe you just want to build your own fortress? Or maybe you're looking forward to the actual castle sieges and boat raids. Let me know in the comments below and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And don't forget to check out the live streams over at twitch.tv slash moidog where I will be playing all of these open playtests. But that's it for me. Until next time, peace.